data sleep with our favourite song on it. Now, I've not come across anybody who's not interested in music. There are certain genres of music, there are certain bands or artists, there are certain albums and there are songs on these albums. Now, you think about your favourite song of all time, whether it's classical music, pop music, rap music, whatever it would be. Just listen to that song in your head. This is your favourite tune. So, he says, let's look at the 999 stuff first. It takes you down the aisle, the equipment starts getting smaller, the plastic doesn't even look plastic anymore, and he gets your CD and he puts it in the 999 stereo and presses play. 999. It's Japanese, you can't even read what the logo says on it. And he press play. Think about the sound, your favourite song, coming out of this stereo now. Thank God it finishes pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is we take the CD out and we start to walk up the aisle, and the stereo start getting bigger, and we start separating, and now the speakers are stood on the floor, and then we put the CD in the two grand piece of equipment. Crank it up to a ten. Think about your favourite song coming out of this piece of equipment here. And if you actually assessed the 999 and the two grand piece of equipment, you'll quickly come to the conclusion that your language description of the two experiences, some people might say, oh, a bit tinny, crackly, and then moving up to this side of things, more resonant, full of sound, various other things. But the reason that we have these different descriptions is because the sound hits your ears, causes a sensation inside, that then causes a language description that is vastly different from these two products. People buy emotions, not products and services. Who's got a burglar alarm code? Okay, challenge you again. You've gone through a physical purchase process exercise. You bought the pad that you put the number in before you go to bed and when you leave your property. You've got the boxes on the outside of the wall. What you've really bought is the peace of mind and security that when you leave your property, there's a deterrent. So if people buy emotions, not products and services, why the hell are we telling people where our offices are and how many staff we've got? Because that is not an emotional sell. So what I want to introduce to you is this five-step plan. Now, everybody knows their name, right? Okay, <laughs> done. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody knows their business name. So point one and five, there's only three things to remember. The second point of the Mr. Present the Five Step Plan is sell the emotional value factor of your business. Now for me, yeah, I'll go for training and all that sort of stuff, but what I'm really selling is confidence. Because that's the cause effect of what happens when people have been on the training courses. So that is what I'm selling. Now then, point number three. If I went around saying, yeah, I just uh, sell confidence, people are going to say, well, how the hell do you do that? And point three in the plan is how to now get specific and clearly identify what offers, products and services that you offer. That when people have had those services, they then feel the emotions in point two. Okay, so for me it's you know, coaching, training, various other things. The danger that some people fall into when I train them in these techniques is they just feel so anxious about trying to tell everybody, every product and service, what it is that they offer. We've only got 40 to 60 seconds depending on the group leader. <laughs> and uh, how time constricted they are or not as the case may be. But do not rattle on. Name and business name, sell emotional value factor. Number three, chunk down and get specific. What specifically are you offering that allows people to feel the emotions in point of <coughs> Okay, as business networkers, everybody's here to do business. Let's just be honest, that is why we're here. So, in an elevator pitch, it's nice to actually weave a testimonial into that pitch. Now, I could stand here and say, yeah, Mr. Presenter, training course is best on the planet, and that's going to cause some sort of reaction. People will look at me and say, well, a bit overconfident. Or, who says that? According to who? But we really want to get across the fact that, hey, we're in business, we're doing business with other people, and that those people are saying really <coughs> good things about us. Now, if I turned up and said, some of my customers say that, Mr. Present the training courses are the best on the planet. This technique, which is called using a quotation language pattern, reduces the directness of the same statement. A, it's not come from me. But it also gives a third party validation. It creates a picture in our minds that A, we're in business, we're doing business and we're saying good things about us. And if people buy emotions, we feel emotions from the pictures that we create in our minds. So, 
when I talk about maybe sort of painting pictures in audiences' mind, it's using tools and techniques to outline what emotions it is that you're selling, but also to create these images or mental thought processes around we're in business, we're doing good business, and people say good things about us. Name and business name, emotional value factor, jump down and get specific on what products and services you offer, leave a testimonial in. And then finally, point from number five, everybody knows their name and their business name. Okay, the final technique here is this. The major failing of many networkers in many, many different networking organisations is their failing to give a clear call to action. You send out a piece of marketing literature or an email to, to, to market your business, the last thing you put is call or fill in this box or do something to actually activate what it is that's being offered. And the same applies when you're giving your message in a 40 to 60 second space. You have to tell people specifically what it is they need to do to access your services. Because I guarantee you, not everybody in the room is as confident as other people in the room. What some people in this room this morning may want is one of your services. But they haven't <coughs> the confidence to actually come up and actually engage with you for maybe fear of engaging in a sales process. So what we need to do for those people is actually say, look, you know, if you are interested, either have the one-to-one -one, or there's information on the website or whatever medium it is that actually those people need to go to, to see you. Maybe not face-to-face, -face, another mechanism. So just be clear on what people need to do next. So it's nice and easy. Name and business name, emotional value factor, get specific on your products and services, weave in a testimonial, and then your name and business name, a clear call to action on what it is that you do next. Now I'm going to show you a bit of magic. Okay, nothing to do with magicians or anything along those lines. But language can be really, really powerful. And I'm sure that everybody will agree with me that they do not want people disagreeing with what it is that they're saying, right? Do you want people going, no, 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 that's wrong, that's wrong. I was saying yesterday to Kingswood, you know, to have confidence in this presentation space, the plan that I've just given you will allow you some steps to follow that will give you more control. And the reason these steps to follow are in place is because, has anybody heard of TED Talk on YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Okay, TED Talk brings together the greatest thinkers and leaders of our lifetime. They get 17 minutes to talk. And there's a guy on there called Simon Sinek. Not cynic as in cynical, S-I-N-E-C-K. And what Sinek has done is he has codified Apple's communication structure. Apple's communication structure. Now, it's not normal when we enter into the networking space that if I met Dickie, I'd say, Dickie, all right, you know, I'm Nick, and he might say, what do you do? It's normal, right? So what do you do? So we say our job title, and then we might say, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I'm a presentation trainer, I do coaching, you know, various other things. But what we fail to do in this circumstance is actually say why we do what we do. Why we do what we do. What Cynic did with Apple's communication structure is how Apple communicate is they don't say what I do, how I do it, or then why I do it. They change that round. Why we do what we do, how we do what we do, and then what we do. Because what they have mastered is understanding what their business purpose is. Now the business purpose for you guys is contained in step two of the five step plan. Your emotional value factor. My purpose is not to deliver training courses, it's to help people become more confident in selling products and services. That's what I get out of bed for in the morning. Not to be a trainer, but to help business people become more confident. And I would urge you to think about communicating in that way. It's a hell of a lot more interesting when you get in dialogue with somebody. Can you imagine going to a networking event? Are there any lawyers in the room this morning? No? Great stuff. Decent people, aren't they? When they're six foot under. But anyway, so <laughs> when you communicate with somebody, if I said I'm a solicitor, people start to build a picture in their mind that they reckon that they know that they do. They reckon they know what to do, when I'm, they may not. But if I demonstrate emotional value factor, it leaves the conversation open, open for how do you go about doing that? And the relationship starts to develop. Okay. So, going back to you don't want people disagreeing with what it is that you're saying, how do you get people to agree with what it is that you're saying? Okay, so there's a technique here in linguistics called mind reading. Mind reading. Okay, so Matt, you're in the IT business, right? No. No. <laughs> Tell me, again. 